God, in the name of the Lord, for our today daily devotion. I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear loving Father, we thank you for this hour. We bless your holy name for our daily devotion. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. We give you all the honor. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for opening doors where there is no opening. You open doors. You make out the way where there is no way. We thank you. We pull, you pull down walls of darkness that stood against us. We thank you. We magnify your name for your light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. Thank you, Lord, for your special grace for us to continuously remain in your word and trust you by your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for rebuking us even when we are wrong, for us to follow the, the right word and instruction. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for our loved ones and family. We thank you for our health, Almighty God. We thank you for the grace to be born again. Thank you. We bless your holy name, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, teach us today, speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I welcome you. This evangelist, catch your favor, Nathan. This is our daily devotion. And you might be surprised. Our daily devotion topic today is money. Money is very important. The Bible says money answers everything. And also said, money is the root of all evil. Whereby we must apply wisdom when it comes to money. We must check our conscience when it comes to money. You don't lay down rules. Some people, some people have this mindset because they are in need. They want God to answer their problem, answer the problem first, answer their prayers first, especially provide the money first before they, they can serve the Lord. Condition, you can't give God condition. You cannot come to the Lord because you want him to attend to your financial need first before. I know very well that in the house of God, there should be provision for people that have one need or the other. That's where the tithe goes to. That's where the storeroom goes to. You understand? But some people have this mindset that finance, abundance of money, is Christianity. That is a false teaching. That is a false doctrine. And it was brought up by these prosperity preachers. So when it comes to money, we put it aside. We serve the Lord first. The Bible said in the book of Matthew 6, 33, seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then every other thing shall be added unto you. That's what the Bible said. We have to deserve God first, desire to make heaven. Then every other thing shall be added. You see, he knows our needs. But today, he knows our needs. He knows how to provide. There's something I wrote down. You know, this was a period where I think that was some years ago I wrote this. Money is very important in some situation. A lot of people say that money is the solution to everything. A lot of people say, is that true? There was a time the mega million lottery in America rose to $500 million. And a lot of people talked about it in America. And people bought lottery tickets in almost all the states in America. I thought of everything I would do if I get that kind of money. Another thought came, to my, came into my mind. <laughs> and I asked, will I still love and reference God the way I used to? Will I continue to talk to Jesus and wait on him and see his bright light? Will I continue to separate myself as Jesus desires me to? And will I continue to have faith in God for my daily provision if I get all that money? You see, each day comes with experiences of God's faithfulness to his word. The Lord gives us the opportunity to learn every day as we fellowship with him. But are we going to be patient each day to fellowship with him when we suddenly we become millionaires and billionaires overnight, you see? The answer might be no. Money will not solve all this. Rather, all this sudden money may cause our hearts to drift from having faith in God's provider. In God the provider. <clears throat> it is almost likely that we may not have time 
to fellowship with Christ daily like we used to. And that is the fact, that is the truth. The devil comes in with ideas that will cause a lot of distraction. The distraction leads to some form of lifestyle that may not glorify God. Sufficient of the day is the evil thereof. The mind drifts away from God's guidance due to pride and abundance of wealth. Yes, I would like to have a lot of money that will come gradual. I put it gradual and counts in billions of abundance. However, we do not want to have the type of money that will cause us to forget God and serve mammon, God of money. You see, money is very important, but we want to be very careful. There's something in the book of Proverbs. I love the two portions of book of Proverbs we read here. I have here. I know Samuel 2, Samuel 2 verse 7 said, The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifted up. Proverbs 22, 22, 23 verse 4 said, Labor not to be rich, cease from thy own wisdom. With that set thy eyes upon that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings. Make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. When money comes in somebody's way, if you are not careful, it will develop wings and fly. At the same time, you will want to reverse it. When your confidence is more in money, your faith will develop wings and fly out. That's what I just want us to get. Proverbs 37 and 8 said, Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. You see, the convenience of our daily need is the most important thing. We do not want to gather so much trouble in, on ourselves that we may not be able to sleep at night. I'm telling you. I have gone through some research. A lot of people that have won mega millions in America, 95% of them, their life, became to nothing. They lost loved ones. They lost families. They went into droves. They became so pompous that their life, they regretted winning the lottery, the lot of money. They regretted it. Proverbs 38 and 9 said, Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I will be lest I be full and deny thee. Yes, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. I love this portion. Don't give me too much, Lord, that will make me forget you. Rather, don't make me to be poor for me to go and steal. So that people will not ask me, Where is my God? And the Bible's said something say when you have sufficient so much in a day you see there's look at it very well the evil is somewhere around the corner if we look at the book of mark mark chapter 10 17 said and when he was gone forth into the way there came one running and knelt to him asked him good master what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud none. Honor thy father and mother. And, and he answered, and said unto him, Master, all this I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, 
and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me <laughs> and he was sad at that saying and went away and went away grieved for he had great possession and jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of god and the disciples were astonished at his word but jesus answered again and said unto them children how hard is it from them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of god it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god if i should go back i love this verse 34. he said and the disciples were astonished at his word but jesus answered again and said unto them children how hard it is for them that trust i like that word trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of god look when when you have trust in money you will lie when you have look your focus is in money you will create so many deceptive stories to scale through when somebody has so much trust in money it is hard to say the truth when somebody has so much trust in money look at how money how, how we are going to how much we are going to waste or how much they are going to get you see we, this is where you see people start lying when it comes to money here you know we say money again i'm telling you when it comes to money monetary matters people will consider what they will gain when we have so much of this money that we do not have time to pray it's because we have put our more confidence in the money and you will ask me are there a lot of people that are rich today yes a lot of people are rich but not all of them have trust in money yes some still maintain their relationship with god you know why because it gradually came they work hard for their money it gradually came and gradually depending how their relationship with God is. You see, this mindset people have that whoever that have so much cars, expensive cars, big house, appear expensive money are Christian. This is a lie. This is a pure lie. Go to the heart of so many people that have so abundance of money. Depending on what you call riches, it depends on what you look at to be wealthy. For example, somebody have a vehicle. It's for convenience to be able to move around. It's not for exhibition to show that you are rich. For somebody to be able to build a house of their own. It's just God has granted you grace. You work hard and you build. That's where you want to live. You are not competing with anybody. God has granted you grace to have those. For somebody to have a good high, high taste of some qualities, does not mean somebody that likes depend on what that person likes. Because, for example, when I'm buying something, I don't look at the cost, but I look at the quality of what I'm buying. Because when I look at it, if I put it on, will it last for me? So some people might look at it, oh, that she's so expensive but some people look at it that it's good to buy something quality that will last i have some things maybe like clothes or something some have stayed 10 15 years when you bring them up because of the quality is there that is not showing rich it's, it's not wealth you see it depends on what people look at it depends on what people value what they look at to be wealthy when necessities of life i don't look at it as wealthiness it depends on what you want to buy. You keep saving money. You keep saving money. You keep saving until it comes to the time, a, a amount of money you have, you can, uh, the, uh, the quality of what you can afford. You go get that in for the purpose that you need it for. But out somebody that is kind of, you know, outside might be looking at it up. 
this person are worthy. It depends on what people look at being wealthy. You see what I'm saying? It depends. It's like it comes with necessities of life. If you are able to get some things for yourself, there are necessities of life. You're able to mobility, move around, do your business. Because some of the things we buy, it come as a result of need. It come as a result of sometimes there are some my children, my, I have two daughters, they will just come. My the oldest always come to my wardrobe. Mommy, <laughs> I'm coming for shopping in your wardrobe. I'll just be looking at her. Because some of the things I have there, I've kept it for a while. And when you bring it out, because I know I have children, they will, they will call, have need of those things. It's for the need of the home. It's, some people might look at it as uh, it's highly expensive or they are showing off. These people are worthy. No, that is not what I call worthiness. No, it's just as a result of need. So when people have trust in the money, that's where there's a problem. For example, God will lay in your heart, take this, go and give to this person because of what they need. People that have trust for money, and look, and look at what Jesus said. He said, these people that have trust in riches, it is hard for them to enter the kingdom of God. So it depends on what people call riches. It depends on what people call being rich or being having abundance of money. Because people buy what they need. This is what they need that will serve what the purpose, what they want to use it for. Or somebody else might be somewhere be looking at it. Are these people now? These people are worried. No. It's not, it's not like that. So we don't look at the abundance of what somebody has and justify them to be rich. No, don't look at it like that. That is a very wrong notion. When we are looking at money here, people, there are some people who have so much trust in money, it is hard to help those out there, to help those in need. And Jesus said, if you give to these ones that are in the street, you have given them to me. The Lord might convict you. You know, my, there was a time I was saving money for something and I was believing God for the money to increase. I think I've shared it here some time ago. I was believing God for that something huge. But I, as much as I tried to add up, it didn't come past a particular uh, amount because I have to pay bills. There are so many things I have to do with my kids. And I've been praying and believing God. I've been praying and believing God. That money didn't add. The one day there was there was a, a meeting we had. There were some pastors that came there. And there was this young couple, a young man. They were trying to open their own ministry. So and we were there. A lot of us were ministers. And the Lord laid in my heart that I should go take that money and give to this person. I said, really? Okay. Because I've tried. It didn't work. So I, the money didn't go more than that $1,000. I said, well, and what I'm looking for to save is up to like five to six thousand dollars. It's not going high. So that day we were praying. The Lord said, take that money, go and give to that young minister. So I called the guy. I said, okay, meet. Then I was I was in school. So I told him to meet me up in school before I go pick my children from the daycare, you know. So when he came, I gave him the envelope. He was like, he wasn't really focused on it. He was just looking at me, blessing me. How are you doing, my sister? That kind of thing. But my, my hand was on the envelope. As soon as he touched it, he was shocked. He looked at me, opened his mouth. I said, that's what the Lord said I should give. I, you know, I don't know the type of prayer he prayed. He prayed with tears in his eyes. Brethren, that thing I was believing God for, that before the end of that year or the, the next year, I paid off my car notes. I paid off, some of you, you know, you don't, you buy car hire purchase. I paid off my car and I was able to book tickets that is even over $6,000 for me and my kids. How the Lord did it, he, he I, don't, I cannot describe it. You see, sometimes when God have his way to increase somebody, he will test you with little. He will test you with little. You see what I'm saying? So if I have put trust in that money, I won't, if I was, I would have checked that spirit. Oh, if I put trust in that money, I wouldn't have gotten the increase of what I wanted. 
So in, in some certain circumstances, there are people that are ready to die for money. There are people that put so much trust in money because if they see money, they will be able to serve the Lord. That is a very wrong thing. Some people put the mind that when my business starts growing, when I start getting money, I will serve the Lord. You know what? You are telling the Lord that I cannot serve you because when business comes, you won't have time. You cannot have time. So when we look at issue of money, everybody, everybody have need for money. But the point here is, what is your heart towards money? Do you put trust in money or do you put trust in God? The second part is, when a huge sum of money is land in your account, you will forget God. Because you will remember there are so many places you have to go. There are so many things you want to do. There are so many activities set up. The devil will help to create so many of those things because that money just came, boom, large sum of money just came. Before this person realized it, they, their faith has gone through the roof. You see them many go into, take, start taking substance that are very, very dangerous. And that is where problem comes. So like something I wrote here is good. I love riches, but you know what? I want it to come gradual. You see, when it comes gradual, you will be the one arranging it. You will, even though it's added, you won't really look at it because when it comes, there's something that you know you need it for, you know? So uh, when you have the excess of it in a day, it's too much. Definitely it will pull somebody's faith out from Christ. Luke 16, 13 said, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That is truth. You cannot serve two masters. Let us be honest. A heart that is open to the Lord. The Lord might say, take all these things you have, go and give the right person. Because that person's mind, the focus on that, that love, it will be hard for that person to do it. It will be hard for that person to do it. So somebody that have too much trust in money, this is God of money, mammon. And that's why, you see, when I look at all these prosperity preachers, you see, you see that their trust is in money. Because they put trust in money, they'll be able to twist the word of God to get more money. Their God is the money. Let's not, let's not contradict the issue here. Their God is their money. If I look at Hebrew 13, 5, say, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such thing as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I am somebody that, you know, I might have something. And the Lord said, okay, give this to this person, give this to this person. I do that even before, I, you know, look at things that I have to do myself because I have experienced the faithfulness of God. Once he gives instruction, once he gives instruction, follow his voice. Trust him because what you are doing is according to his words. I'm telling you, the Lord will visit you at the point of your need. So what am I trying to say here? Do not put your whole trust in money. Do not put trust in money. Rather, money should be submissive to you. When you look at money as, oh, something you want to walk, almost kill somebody for, you see, you, that person is serving mammon is serving a deity a demon called mammon is god of money and this is where you see avarice that's why you see deceptive evil intention people that are ready to kill because of money because they serve money you see what i'm saying so but somebody that look at money i am the one that pro, serve, i work for that money i am the one that work for the money provide the money the money is supposed to serve me i am not going to serve the money so you you are the one not channeling money where is supposed to go. You don't want the money to channel you to lie, to deceive people, to get money. You see what I'm saying? You won't let money control you to the extent of taking some dangerous, dangerous jobs, dangerous routes to, for, to get that money because it means that that person is serving the money. So money is supposed to be submissive to us. You command money, you speak. Where the money will go, the money will go there. Because you know why? Your trust is in him who provides. Because this is your trust is in him who provides. You are not moved where the money goes because you will channel and control money where money should go. So we do not put trust in money. So people that go play lotto and gamble and all that, I will leave them with their choices. But when 
Somebody is gambling, walking towards this for money. I see a lot of people gamble. I don't think it's a wise thing to do because you know why? You work hard for your money and you allow the money to control you. When you work hard for that money, why putting that money in something that is not useful? Use the money in something that is useful. Some people say, but you win. But you, the point is, did you work for that money? What you put it into? You are putting it to see if you can reap from other people. It depends on how people look at gambling to be. I don't gamble. I don't see it as I don't see it as a godly guidance. I don't see it as something that God will be able to uh, uh, that uh, obey the word of God for me to be able to control money. You see what I'm saying? Because somebody that is gambling is at the risk of loss and the fear of not losing this money is there because you want to trick other person and win that money from somebody. You see, gambling goes in a different way does not mean that God will not is not able to turn the situation of that money around to bring it to serve the church, to build this house. You see what I'm saying? So like in the, in the, in, in, when you see the Egyptians, when they were uh, the Israelites, when they were living the Egyptians, God said, God, tell them, all those Egyptians, they gave them their stuff. They gave them their expensive treasures. And they used those things to build for God. You see, there are ways God works. That's why sometimes we don't underestimate God. There's nothing... God cannot do. He said, if men will not worship him, he's able to raise rocks, stones that will worship him. So if people, for example, God might say, provide this money for this family, and that person will choose. God is able to turn stones and rocks for money to solve his problem. That's, there's nothing God cannot do. So I want to encourage us today, please do not put your trust in money. Do not put your trust in money. Don't put your mind in the area that if God does not answer, bring this money, I will not do this. No, that person has already signed signature for hellfire. You know why? God of mammon is the is God of money. So don't put that money first. You should be able to be the one that control money. Money should be submissive to you. If I don't have you now, I will have you later. I have to talk to him that makes provision. I want to give us a, a little testimony. I know time is going, just I've gone. Let me say something. I am somebody that for, when I get money now, I just wait. The way the Lord want me to go pay bills and all that. There was a situation where <laughs> the Lord gave me instruction. Give this, give this, give. I was just doing. When I finished, I noticed that, hey, there were some certain things I forgot I didn't pay for. I don't know what to do about it because I just listened to how God guided so, and there was, there's one that needs about $250. Yeah, $252, right? And I don't know where to go. Even when I was praying, the person, you know, who had to contribute money to do something. So when that person was call, calling, I was in prayer. The Lord said, this is, look at what, the Lord said, she's calling you because of that money. I said, oh, Lord, I don't know. I started praying. Guess what? You see, the Lord knows your our needs. He makes provision. So when I got to the office, you know, there was something that they were discussing about me, how effective my job has been. They just, my, my, the CEO called me to the office and said, hey, Catherine, there's something I want to tell you. You did a good job and all that. We want to give you incentive. I was like, really? How much did he give me? $250. Exactly that amount that I need. Exactly. The only thing is extra $2 is in my purse. I have to take $2 and add to that money. Brethren, the Lord knows your need. You control money. Don't let money control you. That's just a little testament I want to give. The Lord knows exactly amount where the money should come. The Lord is able to turn rocks and twist the rocks. They become money to solve the need for the church. This I'm telling you today just happened today. It has to do with money. God provides for his own. So we control money. Money should not control us. So you don't serve money. Money should serve. You know, you don't serve money. Money should serve us. So when, when you are dealing with money, you have to reference God with every income you are coming your way because he's the one that gives life for you to get those resources. So he's the one that should be in charge over resources in your home because when you put trust in him, when he say, give your some, you pay your tithes, you visit uh, people that I need and do as the Lord instructs. I am telling you, he will make a way. So what am I trying to say here? Do not put your trust in money. Do not... Pray to have abundance of money because you might have it, you forget God. You might have it, you forget God. I'm telling you. So I want us to pray. If 
for adventure, you have this mindset. Oh, when God provides, I will serve him. I'm telling you, you are not ready to serve the Lord. You get that money, you won't have time. You won't have time. So I want us to thank God and pray, Lord, every area I put my trust in money, forgive me. Everything that I've been doing that is not right, forgive me. And you want to pray, Lord, I want money to be submissive to me. Help me not to put my trust in, my, in money because my trust in money means I'm serving God of money. And it leads to dangerous ideas and dangerous deceptive moves. So you want to pray, Lord, is there any area I have put trust in money, Lord? Forgive me in Jesus' name. Is there any area I've lied, I've created stories in a way to grip people off because of money, Lord? Forgive me in the name of Jesus. And you pray, Father, help me not to put my trust in money. I pray in the name of Jesus that your mighty power reign over my income, control my heart to serve you so that I will not serve money in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear loving Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus that your glory reign over every life here, that your mighty power reign over every life here. Lord, I pray for your mercy and forgiveness in every area but that people look down on you, the power that you, you over every of our income, Lord. I pray for forgiveness in Jesus' name. And I pray this prayer today, Father, touch your family, touch everyone here, for them to experience your power of miracle, for them to experience your power of open door, for them to experience your power of favor, for them to experience your power of control over everything here on earth. Father, I pray your children open up for them to experience your mighty power of miracle over the needs that they trust you for in Jesus name. Lord, I ask for your visitation over every soul here, over every life here, that this family will have personal relationship with you, that whatever they have put trust in you for you to guide their day-to-day -day activities. Dear Lord, I pray for every one of us. Do not give us that money that will make us forget you. Do not give us that money that make us think otherwise, negative things. Do not bring us to be poor, not to have, that we may devise stealing from people, stealing by tricks, as prosperity preachers, stealing by tricks. Father, do not allow us to come below to be poor in Jesus' name. Rather, give us strength, energy, open doors to work hard, and you give us increase in Jesus' name. Help us not to lie when it comes to money. Help us not to rip from, rip, other people off in Jesus' name. Help us, Heavenly Father, that we will not be like prosperity preachers that will twist your money, lie on the innocent to get money from them. Father, we pray never to be like them in Jesus' name. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will never serve God of mammon. Rather, we control, we subdue the power of money. We control money in the name of Jesus. And money be submissive to every one of us here today. For in Jesus' name, as we go about our business, open our eyes to see your hand of miracles. Open your, our eyes to see your faithfulness. Open our eyes <coughs> to see your miracles in everything that pertains to our sources of income. As we give our offering, as we give our tithe, as we give to reach out to as many youths, instruct us to give our money to. Lord, I ask for favor. I ask for miracle open door. I ask for lucrative businesses that you start to reach out to your children as many that give to the needy, as many that submit to you by their, with their resources. Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name that you give them open doors of favor that you give them open doors of abundance in those things that they need to meet their day-to-day -day activities and necessities of life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, your children will not beg for bread. I pray your children will not go begging begging or because of or be poor. Father, I pray your children will never experience this in Jesus' name. I pray today as many that give their money in a place of worship that is occultic and they keep ripping from their income. Lord, I pray for your intervention in these families that you open the eyes of these brothers and sisters that they will realize where their money is going and pull out from these foes in Jesus' name. Rather, I pray that you put your children in a place of fellowship that we have increased. They will have reason to increase. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
this is not a prophetic time. I want to speak to somebody. The money you give in offering in a place of worship, the money you give in a place of worship, pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see what they use this money for. Because where the money is going is not benefiting you. That's why there's no fruitfulness. Don't look at the name because the name of this site is a well-known place. Don't go by that name. You want to say, Lord, open my eyes so that I will see the money I put in here where it goes. Father, in the name of Jesus, open the eyes of your children for them to see the areas their money is going that is not right. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that this family, this person, to reach out to the needy, those that I need, because I know you bless them in abundance when they reach out to those that I need in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover your family with the blood of Jesus. This day, I commit into the hand of God for the Lord to lead and guide you in Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Please join us today for our, our, our live prayer, our God's prayer group generals. We have our live prayer today. I pray everyone join us in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. This evangelist catch in favor and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. For surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Another person here, you always want to hear a prophecy of money, money, money. The Lord said you will never get as you continue to look for who will prophesy money to you. He said you should, he said I should tell you, he said, believe in my word. I am in my word. Put your life in my word and you will experience the manifestation of my word in your life. This is what I'm getting. Listen again. When you go looking for who will prophesy money to you, you will not get that money. He said, I am in my word. You, be, you live your life in my word. Believe in my word. And I will manifest my, my miracle in my, through my word. And that's where the Bible made us understand the book of Revelation chapter 19. If you look at verse 10, he said, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So take the word of God. It's prophesied in your life. And live in this word. You will see the faithfulness of God. That's the message I'll give to this person. Stop going looking for who will prophesy to you. They'll prophesy do. The word of God is enough prophecy for you. I warn again, stop going looking for who will give you financial prophecy. You will not get any. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye.